Uh, let's just look at this one. We have enough time to do that. If you remember, uh, on that page, we had this, you had this uh, cubic equation, like this, and you were given the root of that equation, and the, the, the way we, we did this question already before. In fact, I think there is an, even the video on YouTube solving this question. And we found these two roots, actually. These two roots, that's the result of that, of that effort, our joint effort to get. Now, remember, if you look at the notes, actually, if you look at the notes now, before this question, there's a, this sentence which says, if you use the Cardano method on the, on the equation which has all three real solutions, strange things might happen. Does it say so? Yes. Well, that's a good time to discuss the strange things now. Because that's a cubic equation, and it has real solutions, which we found some other way. We should remember that by now. But now, we will do this by Cardano method. So Cardano method starts with this great idea. OK, we just take x to be u plus v. We don't know this uv. It will be now our new unknowns. And we take this u and v, and we plug it in here. If I do that, it's here. This is the for the x cube. This is for the negative 6x. And this is for plus coefficient, which is number 4. What, what was the next step in the Cardano method? We just expand, yes. yes. We just expand, and I have this expansion somewhere here. I have this binomial expansion. I'm not going to draw the Pascal triangle for you. It's just a for cubic, cubic expansion is easy. That's the one. So if I use this cubic expansion, uh, the left-hand side of this inequality will be u cubed plus v cubed. I, I will rearrange it right away just to save some space on this on this slide. So this is my u cubed. This is my v cubed. I just put it up here. Now, OK, I already combined everything, everything the, next, the next step in his brilliant idea was just he said, let's just now assume that this bracket is 0. Here it is. If I assume this bracket is 0, it means that u times v equal 2. Here it is. Or equivalently, u cubed times v cubed equal 8. And if this bracket is 0, then this remaining part of the equation will be just equal negative 4. And that's why we have a second condition on u and v. Here it is. If you take this, if you look at these two equations together, you can solve them for u and v. So I just, I'm just thinking about this u, u cube and v cube as just the variables. So these two unknowns, u cube and v cube, like unknowns, they satisfy this relation, they satisfy this relation. That's a typical Vieta's theorem. We can inverse it, uh, reverse it. And the equation we're looking at will be this quadratic equation. So this u cube and v cube, they, they are solutions to this quadratic equation. That's the content of the converse Vieta's theorem. If you struggle with this, what I just said now, you should revisit the, what we did when, we, when I explained to you the Cardano methods in full details. Anyway, so we solve this quadratic. So when I go for these two solutions, it will be x1, 2, negative 2, that goes for the negative of half b, plus minus 4, which goes for the square of half b, take 8, and the 1 at the bottom. If you do the arithmetic, here it is. That's your numbers. Oops. That's your numbers. So our u cube and our v cube, one of these numbers, here they are. They are complex this that's, time. That's the if you remember this 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 mentioning of strange things before the example, they start happening right now. Because the Cardano method we did before, these numbers we found, they were real numbers. Uh, there wasn't any problems with taking cubic roots of those numbers. This time, we're looking at the proper complex numbers with a proper imaginary part, and we have to take roots of those, cubic roots. That's where this, our discussion, our preceding discussion, comes into the consideration. No? Here's my two numbers. Here's a negative, a negative 2. Here's the negative 2i. Here's the 2i. So this is the red number, is negative 2 plus 2i. This blue number is negative 2 negative 2i. Here's my two numbers. Before I go after cubic roots of these two numbers, in the proper complex complex sense, I have to bring these numbers to the exponential. It's a 45 degree angles here. 45 here, 45 here. So I can guess, I can see the angles here. This angle is 3 pi on 4. And this angle is negative. It's not a pi. It's 4. So my exponential forms stay down here. Here they are. And the length of those numbers, it's a Pythagoras, simple Pythagoras, root 2 times 2. So this is the, this, these are the exponential form for these two numbers. Eps, uh, modulus, using modulus. 
is the argument, plus and minus, or plus and minus. Our job now to find the cubic roots of these two numbers, right? The formula was up there, and here. Here it is. That was the formula. So we, we take the nth root of the modulus, we divide the argument by n, and then we add these extra things, revolutions by n. We have to do this for two complex numbers now. Uh, go down here. Here we go. By the way, for each solution, so when you get, take u cube equal to this number with plus, for instance, there will be three solutions to this equation. When you take v cube and equal to this number with minus, there will be another three solutions to this equation. So you have three versions of u, you have three versions of v. And somehow we need just to find three roots in between these nine, nine combinations. Okay, let's just, let's just see what the solutions will be. Here's my solution. Okay, look at this. I take the cubic root out of this, out of modulus, which is simple. It's just root two, cubic root of it. Now with the exponentials, I have to divide this thing by three. This thing, u is, goes with plus. I divide this thing by three, so it's just pi and four. And then I have to add this extra thing. And that's my expression for the u solutions. And that's the similar expression for the v solutions. And we have three solutions for each of these. Now, and I'll show you these solutions now. They are on this diagram. If you, if you remember my, my u, u, it was a number with plus. So u was this, sorry. u was this number. I'll zoom in. u was this upper number. So this was number u cube. We solved this. And this was number v cube. That was the v cube number. So remember, u red goes for u, red color. Blue goes for v. Now we go down to the diagram below. Here's my solutions. This three red vectors, that, I mean, the roots of this u equation up here. Red vectors here, that's the roots of the u vector. And blue vectors here, that's the roots of the v equation. So we can mark them now carefully. Let's just try to mark them now. For instance, this red vector, this one, argument. So this red vector, it's u naught. So my u naught is supposed to be next to this vector. So this red vector is u1. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. u1. And this one, obviously, u2. You can do the same tri trick with the blue vectors, but be careful. So blue are the solutions to the v equation. So this blue, it's a v naught, very much. It's v1 because we plus it. You see, we go negative. That's a negative pi and four, but we still plus it for v1. That's why, that's why we go up. And this is v2. Out of these nine combinations, you can see which one you should take to end up with your three solutions. You should combine v naught plus u naught. And then if you combine this in the vector sense, it will be this green vector. And the length of that green vector will be, remember, if I zoom out a little bit, just look at, let me just zoom out a little bit. Let me just bring the solutions we know beforehand. Let me bring it down here. Yeah, you see, this, this one is a solution too. Uh, what about this green vector? You see the combination of V1 and U2, this little one. This represents minus one plus root three. And obviously, this longest one, u1 plus v2, will represent the solution. It will be x3 vector, yes, minus 1, minus 3.